Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're not going to step into looking at the data quite yet actually. We're going to add a bit more data from the simulation that we did in the last video and I would like to make a data frame that contains a row for all of the individual trades, tells us what MAs were used and also tells us how long the trade lasted. So what we're going to do inside this video is just upgrade things a little bit inside Evaluate Pair and along with that we're going to fix a very subtle issue with the Evaluate Pair function as well and we'll start with that. So down in the run function, you remember that we send in a copy of our price data to the evaluate pair so that any manipulations we do, we don't change the original data set. I'm going to delete that copy. So we send in a direct reference to the price data itself. And what we're going to do inside the evaluate pair is we're going to add a line on here where we're going to take a subset of the data. So we're saying here the price data is equal to the price data and we're selecting some distinct columns. So the time, the price, our column for our specific MA short that we're analyzing, the same for the long, and then making a copy of that. So why are we doing this? Well, later on in this function, we're going to be calculating, as I said, the duration of the trade. Now we're going to do something similar to this where we do this shift. And when we do this shift with the duration, we're going to end up with a row, obviously, because we've shifted, that doesn't have a time inside it. So at the end of this function, I'd like to run this drop NA to get rid of anything that has NA values inside. So not a number or not a time or something like this. Now we've seen in previous videos the NA and also the drop NA. So why is that creating an issue in this one? Well, it's very subtle, but it's a good pointer as to how you really need to check the code because I didn't think about it, to be honest, in the last video. When we calculate our price data to be slightly efficient down in run, we pre-calculate here the MAs, the moving averages, for all of the moving averages that we've supplied. You remember it that in the data processing here, we loop through all of the MAs, making the unique MAs, and create all of the columns at once before we then go about analyzing. This creates an issue inside Evaluate Pair. You'll remember that if, say, we've done MA 256, that the first 255 rows of that data frame will be NAN, obviously, because we're doing the 256 moving average. We can't use anything less than 256 pieces of data to do it. So let's imagine we're testing the short is 8 and the long is 32. Now, in this case, we would lose 31 rows of the data frame because the MA long is at 32. However, remember that the price data data frame coming in has the 256 calculated on it as well, which means actually we have NAN values up to 255 in that table, even though in terms of the two columns for our moving averages here, we'll have a lot more values or a lot fewer NAN values. And that means if we keep all of the MA columns in the data, which we were before, when we come to drop NA, we will drop everything off up to the longest moving average in the data frame. And that means we lose data. Now it might not impact your experiment if you're doing a long, long time period, but losing data is usually a bad idea when you can have it. So what we're going to do when we take our price data is take just the MA columns we need, and then when we drop NA later, we'll only lose the data that applies to these specific columns. So that long-winded explanation out the way, we can go into calculating the duration of our trades. So back inside the candle plot notebook, important thing here is the explanation. So the code for this will be on GitHub. We're going to put the code in masim.py, but it's easier in the notebook to explain what is going on. So in our DF trades, we have our data frame here, which we know. And if I go down to info here, we can see the various data types. Now we want to calculate the duration of our trade. That means we need to have the difference, much like we did the diff for the prices, but with the time column. And we've got the same problem we had with the prices uh, right at the start of this course, being strings. We've got the same problem with time. It's a string column. If you want to do differences between times in Python, you need a date time type, which you can subtract and that gives you a time delta. So we need to convert this string, this object, into a date time type. To do the conversion, we're going to use dateutil. It's a library that comes inside Python. It has a pass function inside it, which is really, really good at automatically converting many, many different formats of date strings into date time objects. We need to import it by writing the line here. And remember, we're going to putting all this code in masim.py. What we can do is use list comprehension, which we're familiar with now, to change the data type of the time column on DF trades. So I just execute this and rerun the info here. And you can see now that we have a date time type on the column here. That's good. The next thing to do is to make a new column called duration. And what we'll do is we'll take the difference between the times. Before I run this column, however, we're going to have the same issue that we had with the diff here. Remember, this will give me the time difference between the current row and the previous row. That won't be the trade duration. 
To get the trade duration, what I need to do is shift this up by minus one, just as we did here. So now when I execute that and go back to info, you can see that we now have a duration column with a time delta type. And in fact, if we just do the head function here to have a look at what we have, you can see now that we have the durations of all the trades. The only slight issue here is the format of this. So I'd like this time delta in hours. And to do that, what we're going to do is use some of the functionality on our time delta, mainly one called total seconds. And we can take the total seconds of each time delta, divide that by 3,600, and that then gives us the hours. So again, our familiar list comprehension here, we take the duration and we divide the total seconds by 3,600, and now we have the durations in hours, which is exactly what we need. And the last thing we would do then, and we'll do this in masim.py, is just drop all the NA values. So now we have this code more or less uh, inside our heads. Let's go and punch it into masim.py. So the first thing to do is go up to the top of the file, import date util. I'm going to make a separation between our libraries and libraries that come with Python or external libraries we've installed. And then down inside evaluate pair, we can put in this code that we've just looked at. The first code, however, I'm going to put in just before that is to save into the data frame columns, the pair name and the MA short and the MA long. What I'm going to do then is get rid of the MA calls for the short and the long, because remember, they'll all be different for different tests. And I just want the values stored under MA short and MA long. So getting rid of the column is actually quite easy. You just do Dell DF trades and then the name of the column. So we have three new columns and we've taken away our MA columns. And now we're ready to put in the code that we had in the notebook. So we convert our time, we create our duration, we create the hours from the duration. And then last but not least, we're going to get rid of the NA values that exist because of this shift here. So I didn't look at that inside here. So let's just do tail on the notebook and you'll see that the last value is this NAN. This is what I want to get rid of with the drop NA. Okay, so that function's actually done, and we have our data frame trades now storing all this new information. The last thing to do is to store it. So just above process results, we're going to whack in a new function here called store trades. And this one is going to do what it says on the tin. We're going to give it a list of results. And you remember that in our result object, we have this DF trades because we store the data frame in there. So we can make a list of all these data frames using list comprehension. And then we can make one big data frame in one line using pandas concat, which just concatenates a list of data frames altogether and tries its best. If column names are different and things like that, it'll still try its best to punch them all together, sort out the data types and things like that. And then last but not least, we can save this data frame then in a pickle. All that remains is to drop into run and is to call this file. So we'll call it uh, store trades and results. So typing errors and things aside, I haven't actually done this yet. This should run. So let's go into the console and rerun the simulation. So that seems to have run. So I'm going to go back into Visual Studio. We have an alltrades.pkl. So let's go into candle plot then and just read this data frame in and have a look what's inside it. So we have a data frame here with a lot of information. The main thing is we have which moving averages we used, what the duration in hours of it is, what the pair is, the gain, the delta and whether it was a seller or a buy and all that kind of stuff. We do describe quickly just to have a look. Okay, so we have the 67,000 rows in here. Uh, out of pure curiosity, we can see that uh, the average duration was 50 hours. Of course, it's all types of uh, moving average combinations and things like that. Our shortest trade was an hour. I wonder if that one won. And the longest trade was 1,600 hours. That's a long, long time. Okay, then that's it for this video. In the next video, then we can get into digging into this data a little bit more. So thanks very much for watching. Hope that all made some kind of sense and see you in the next one.